Do you know what our Constitution was meant to be? It's that phrase, government based on the consent of the governed. Have you asked yourself ever, governed by whom? And the phrase in the Declaration, that uh, you know, deriving their rights, uh, instituted among men, deriving their rights from the governments, uh, from the consent the of powers, the government, just powers from the consent of the government. What does the phrase consent of the government mean? I, I, and you say, well, it means those who are going to be governed by that government. No, can't be, because they're not governed by that government yet. Therefore, at the time they give their consent, they are not the governed. They are the governing, because they're putting together the Constitution that's going to rule over that government. So in the moment when they give their consent to establishing the government, they are the governors of the government. So what are they governed by? The laws of God. The, the laws of nature laws and of, of nature's, nature's God. God. Yep. So, but who are those governed by God's laws? They are the righteous. And I hope it scalds the ears of all the enemies Wait, of true liberty. Did you say the righteous? I did. I hope it scalds their ears. I'm starting to feel Everybody something. would say, oh, no, Alan, don't use that word righteous. They might think you're being religious and so forth and so on. Well, righteous simply means one who acts in accordance with right. Therefore, one who exercises right. And our whole constitution and way of life is based on respect for the exercise of God-endowed rights. So it has to do with those who are acting righteously, and it is based on the consent of those who are acting righteously. And I can prove it historically, because you look at every document the colonies were based on, the Mayflower Compact, and the Declaration itself, those documents are all, they state right at the beginning, go look at the words of the Mayflower Bank. They are people who make it right. clear, first of all, the of that God. they are a society Amen. formed by the fact that they have come together in the will of God to do his business. And when uh, uh, the founders read Locke, they found this exact formulation. Locke says at one point that we are all put in this world by our master, the creator to go about his business and that's the concept they articulated in the declaration. All right, I'm, I'm going to become now the the time tyrant mm. because the clock shows no mercy and, and that producer <laughs> back there keeps on holding up these signs saying the amount of time. So I'm going to try and do something that I don't know has ever been done with Dr. Alan Keyes and Basil Allen Keyes. Namely, just try and tie you. I'll be the nag and try and tie you to some semblance of fast answers because I want to I want to like skip through a bunch of stuff in seed form. So we'll do it'll almost be a race. All right. Oh, well, do, we'll you know, see. do you all know the point of a nag? Uh, the the, the mm -hmm. history of the nag was to when a, a racehorse is on a, a racetrack, sometimes they will run themselves to death. Mm -hmm. And so to get the racehorse to slow down, they would set a nag out in front of it and the racehorse would finally slow down next to the nag. Mm -hmm top five books people should read, according to Dr. Allen Keyes. And then I'm going to give my top five. Oh, top five books people should read. You start with the Bible. Of course, always uh, the Bible uh, first. Always the Bible first, uh, I think. Uh, and it has many books, so I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> but never mind. I won't go there. Uh, uh, from an American point of view, I'd say my, my second book I always recommend to people, and this is from an American point of view, is, is the, the Federalist Papers. Um, because the Federalist, Federalist papers, papers is key to the I'm the nag. Federalist Papers, uh, one. And, and, and so that would be uh, the second book. Two. Uh, third book I think is, uh, is critical to read with the right understanding. It might be Plato's Republic. Mm. These are books I, I ref recur to a lot for various reasons. Tall right? cotton, all right. Uh, uh, the, the fourth book, and, and you don't give me any restriction here, right? I don't, don't have to be simple books or anything. No, clearly. Because for dealing with, the, clearly. For dealing with a lot of the issues and isms of our day, I think it's essential that one have a familiarity with. You don't have to necessarily read it, but you have to be instructed a little bit in its consequences with a book that had very serious intellectual consequences, and that was Kant's Critique of Pure Reason. Okay. It has a high-flown title and everything, but it's really about a fairly simple thing, taking a look at the limits of our way of understanding things. And that's fifth? all it's about. Uh, and, and I think that that's a, a, a critically important book in my view. Um, and the fifth one, always keep in mind that these things are, uh, you know, right, right off the top of my head at the moment. When we're done with the interview, you're going to come back to me and go, oh, shoot. Stop. Right, right of course right. I will. Right. Uh, but a fifth book I think is important. And here, I, I almost want to say that there are two books tied for this position, right? Because I've done a lot with uh, books right. that I would say are essential to right thinking, mm -hmm. yes? And to understanding mm -hmm. how to defend right thinking biblically based, but also with a sense of science and, and, and philosophic underpinnings. 
But then you also have to understand. I'm the mind failing of, as a nag. See, yes. give, give me the two titles. You have to understand the mind of your adversary. Yes. I got to explain this because right, otherwise ahead. this book is very. If you say one wrong. of mine that I'm about to say, I'm going to be bummed. One book that I would say is worth reading in the complexity of our day is just browse through. Make it a constant thing you browse through because right. it'll help you to recognize origins. Montaigne's essays. And I think that's because his thinking and the things he talked about and the way he talked about them have serious and significant relationship to everything going wrong these days. The understandings that are wrong, uh, a lot of them Montaigne was deceived with. And finally, and I don't recommend Tied this for fifth. Book Go ahead. to everybody. Tied for fifth. I wouldn't recommend this book or any writings by this person. Because I think, I will say at the beginning, uh, people say is the Antichrist come. I think that as is said in the scripture, Antichrists, those who are part of the body of the Antichrist, have been amongst us from the beginning. One of the chief philosophers who I believe was definitely of the body of the Antichrist was Machiavelli. See, and I said you, don't take one of mine. If you seriously want to think through the, prince? the snares, uh, you start with the prince. Uh, but of course, you won't understand the prince if you don't read eventually the discourses. But uh, The discourses, one of my master's degree teacher said that the discourses were actually more important in his yeah. opinion. Well, yeah. that's why I said, you, obviously, if you can't, understand the prince without reading the discourses and you want and you read the prince then you'll want to understand the prince so you're going to have to read the discourses it's actually essential